So I seen that happen and this guy didn't know that was a key. So I can witness that one. Okay. Right. But I tell you what, the city of Flint needs prayer. Right. And when I pray privately, I pray. They say you go into your closet. My closet is at home, but it's not a literal closet. When they were, when we were out there on the line of City Hall, I could feel something in me. Because you can feel it in your heart. And it was, I call it the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was there because I felt it. I feel it in church, I feel it all the time. And I hid behind a tree, and I wanted to make sure that my knees touched the ground at City Hall, and I prayed while the activities were going on. I know that Flint can be fixed. I'm going to end by quoting my mother's favorite scripture, but first I want to say this. Once I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I went to Sunday school. And I'm looking at the young people because Sunday school taught me something. And when we had to go to Sunday school, I got my worst whipping on an Easter when I was trying to stay home and miss Sunday school. But Sunday school taught me something. Reverend Robs is the pastor at Canaan who baptized me. I clearly understood what I was doing when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior in the fourth grade. Remember, if I die, and they don't know when I accepted Jesus Christ, somebody in this room, Miss Spears, tell them it was in the fourth grade in Sunday school. <laughs> but ever since I've been on that journey to try to make it to heaven, I'm, I'll be 55 years old on Monday. Thank God, because from 08, I worked for General Motors for 31 years, but in 08 I took that $140,000 buyout, and I spent $30,000 of my dollars in the first war, and lost to Del Rico by 43 votes. Now I've just made it through a general election, didn't have a dime. <laughs> no yard signs, no t-shirts, and I bought some stickers for $48 and stuck them over the mirror thing. And I made it through the primary with no money. I was invested from the last time, but now as we head into November, I've helped four people in other wards, including myself. Every last one of them made it through the primary. And I'm here to tell you, I'm out for leadership in the city. I'm out for faith-based Christian leadership because I believe that the faith-based community can make things change. We started today with prayer. And once you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you got work to do. Remember they say, what do you do in between the day? I mean, in between them days. What do you do in the dash? You hear them say that at funerals. What do you do while you're living? Well, I'm going to say this. And then I'm going to get to my scripture. I believe and I know mechanically the biggest problem in Flint is people need checks. See some people say jobs. I say people need checks. I graduated from Michigan State political science pre-law and this is what I learned. <laughs> there were two classes of people if I had heard Al Sharpton or some activist say this out in the street, I'd have listened to it. But I was in a 400 level political science class, and they say there's two classes of people the proletariats and the bourgeoisie. Let me explain. The proletariats is the working class, they earn their money with wages and salaries. The bourgeoisie is the owners. They own their money with profits. So you got three ways in America to earn money. Wages, salaries, and profits. They taught me at Michigan State Political Science that the bourgeoisie's job is to oppress the proletariat. In other words, keep them dumb. 
go to college, get an education, come work for me. I'll pay you $170,000 a year. I'll pay you $60,000 a year. I'll pay you enough to keep you happy, keep you oppressed, and you'll have a car, a house, and you can buy groceries week after week, but you're working for me. I might have dropped out of school in the eighth grade, but guess what? You handle my business, you my accountants, you my lawyers, you work for me. I want to teach people in Flint, now that General Motors is gone. When I worked for General Motors, I was a proletariat and a bourgeoisie. My office was in my home. I had three businesses operating. And when I would do my taxes, the W-2 would come, most General Motors workers Refund checks would be four, five, six thousand. Guess how much my refund checks would be? Twenty-one thousand, twenty-three thousand. Because I use all the write-offs that the bourgeoisie use. In other words, there's two kinds of education: formal education and informal education. Everything starts with education. So my point is this: General Motors is gone. Everybody in the city of Flint can have an office in the home. They can do a Schedule C. You can write off gas receipts from consumers. You can write off house notes and mortgages, food. It's called write-offs. Now I'm going to say this. There's a company. Let me see who can answer this question. What arena? do the Detroit Pistons play their basketball games in? The Palace of Auburn. The Palace of Auburn, They always get that one right, but this is the one I've only run into three people who got this right as I campaigned throughout the city. What arena, I'm gonna see if somebody get it in this audience, what arena do the Orlando Magic play their basketball games in? Amway Arena. Yeah, You're right. exactly right. Amway out of Grand Amway, Amway Arena. Amway out of Grand Rapids is an epitome of teaching you something. They teach free enterprise, they teach office in the homes, and they teach franchise and out. A lot of people call it a pyramid, but profits can come from franchise. Look at it like this. And then I promise you I'll do the scripture. <laughs> McDonald's is located in Evanston, Illinois. It's the corporation. But you see McDonald's franchises everywhere. And them nickels and dimes come in from them franchises and they make the home corporation rich. Amway taught us something that we're developing right now, a model for plan. <laughs> Believe me, I'm not just talking about it. We're talking about it. The mayor economic development people. In Flint, we want to informally educate grown folks who need checks. And remember, you might have a pension check, but you can get a supplemental income check. Because we say that you got to offset the high water rates, you got to offset the unlawful streetlight assessment. So why not get an extra check for 300 a week, 500 a week, 1,000 a week? So what we're running on is there's a platform of economic development, meaning that if we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and we do the work to live right, he don't mind if we do the work to enjoy a certain quality of life and help our families while we're here. We're going to take the model from Amway. We might call it Flintway. Their products was soaps and vitamins. Our products will be bottled water, toilet tissue, fruit juices, potato chips, anything that consumers use, and you can branch out. You never run out of people. It's a billion Chinese. If everybody in Flint was in Flintway, you still got people in Swartz Creek, Davis, and Grand Blank. Remember, everybody don't participate, but watch this. When you start spending in shopping right, 10 and $20 a week, and you're getting refund checks, and it's growing, Oh, it'll catch on. Right. Let me leave you with this scripture. Right. It, it's my mother's favorite scripture. She's 81. She's a member of House of Prayer. I'm a member of Shiloh. Right. She had a mini stroke. And while she was in the hospital, I prayed for her. 
little more time with her. But I looked through her Bible and I seen some stuff. One of her favorite scriptures is this. And now it's mine. One of them. Proverbs. Third chapter. Fifth and sixth verse. Trust in God with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways. And he shall direct thy path. God bless you. God bless you, Geneva. Miss Spears, this has been a great day. My knees touch the ground. I've humbled myself. He will heal the land. God bless you. This is the end, okay, for today, for today. Once again, I just want to thank all of you for coming and being a part of Prayer Chain Day. And uh, I don't know, Pastor Jim, why don't you close us off? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Close us out. Send us on our way. Amen. Praise God. Now, let us all stand. Please uh, stand. Did we all really give Geneva enough thanks? And uh, I'm going to ask you also to take a hand of the person next to you while we pray, since this is in unity under the power of the Holy Spirit. And I should probably grab a hand too. Paul, we love you too. Paul, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Lord Jesus, we are humbled before you because you keep on doing greater things than all we could imagine or think. And we praise your holy name and your presence amongst us even now. And Lord God, we ask that even as we break from this place, you'll inflame our hearts with such greater love and passion for lost souls and for this city, that everything that we set out to do will please you and honor you and glorify you and reach people for Jesus. Lord God, remind us that this isn't just a one-day-a-year event, but this is a, a life experience, this is a lifestyle. And Lord God, that when we leave this place, we are witnesses passionately proclaiming the good news with everyone we come in contact with, with our words, with our actions, with our embraces, with our, with our, our thoughts, with our eyes, with every part of us. Lord God, let us radiate with your love in such a mighty way that people will just can't help but say, that's Jesus, and I want to know him. And Lord God, as everyone goes here, we pray for a safe journey and travels, and Lord, for good night's rest, and Father, for even a greater passion to reach the lost of Flint as we make plans for next year. And Father, it is in that precious name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen. Amen.